we're psyched to be watching. Well, I mean, the last couple of games have been blowouts, but the, the, the final eight, including Lakers and Warriors, um, LeBron and uh, Curry on the same court has been amazing. Well, what's been um, what's that been like from your perspective, seeing that, Ramona? I mean, it, it feels like a final, right? I mean, it feels like the NBA finals already with the amount of attention on it, with the amount of adjustments, game to game, minute to minute, the star power and wattage. Like, you know, I was doing radio in L.A. the other day, and uh, my co-host, Steve Mason, was asking me, like, who are the who are the athletes that make the most money in, you know, last year in the world, right? And, of course, it's going to be Ronaldo and Messi, right? And you know, I think... Like, these are the two most marketable guys, the ones who have established themselves as as international superstars on that level. And we're getting it in the second round. It almost feels like I, I want this series to go on for a while, right? Because well, it's going to be almost a letdown in the Western Conference Finals when one of them loses. Yeah, six versus seven. seven. The NBA will never have a six versus seven quite like this one. Does it? Does it? Um, does it get LeBron jacked up? I, I, again, uh, obviously he's been there. He's done that. He's the all-time leading scorer. Um, you know, he wants to win. I understand what another championship would mean to him, so on and so forth. But do, does does the fact that it's Curry and that they go far back, way back, and that they're doing it again right now together? Uh, at, at at different stages of advanced ages, does that land on LeBron, in your estimation? I, you know, I, I gotta be honest. I think some of it is just it's like more. It's just fun. Like you see them talking during the game. Like they've just been through it so many times. But I, you know, I I think with LeBron, like he's 38. He'll turn 39 at the end of this year. Kind of incredible. He's still this good. And I think he's just close enough that he can taste it that nothing else matters. Right? Like the fact that. They made those midseason trades. They reconfigured the team to where he's got a squad now. You know, it's it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was the beginning of the year. And the fact that he's got a squad that he can see a finish, he can see a title, that's the only thing that matters. Because, like, I, you know, honestly, the last couple of years, like, I was kind of wondering where he's getting his motivation from. Like, it felt a little like empty calories when he was chasing Kareem down and the team was bad. Like, you know, I'm glad he got that record. He deserves that record. But, like, LeBron's about the winning. He's he's the player who I think style leads to winning probably better than almost, you know, anyone who's ever played this game in the way he elevates his teammates and um, and just, you know, his, his decision-making out there. Uh, and I think – the fact I think he probably at some when he got to four, I, I, there was maybe a question: Would you would would he even have a chance at five or six? And this team does, and I kind of think that's all that matters right now. Like, yeah, I mean, like what what's what's what, what's getting you up at five o'clock in the morning to train like he does? It's the idea that he could get a title. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, the Lakers are not a house money organization, right? Where where hey, we're playing right. with house money, and and LeBron, as you pointed yeah. out age 38 going to 39 you know house money doesn't mean much to him but they are truly playing with it right now i mean they have the home court advantage in a best of five series right now to move on to the western conference finals and nobody thought when darvin ham was hired and russell westbrook was standing in the corner of his press conference and we're all wondering how workable this all is i mean they are light years from that moment light years you know I knew Darvin back in, I've known him since 2011, right? And that was the year he was an assistant on Mike Brown's staff with the Lakers, right? Do you remember that year? Yeah, sure. That was uh, Phil Jackson had just retired. Mm-hmm. We came off the lockout. There's a Chris Paul trade that gets undone. <laughs> and then Mike Brown and his staff, which if you look back at that staff, it was a pretty good staff. They had Quinn Snyder on that staff, Darvin Ham, Mike Brown, Steve Clifford, um, those guys, they walked into a buzzsaw, right? I mean, can you imagine walking in and having a coach under those circumstances, following Phil Jackson, you know, fought, like having to, to coach Kobe and Pow and Derek Fisher and those guys who who had learned from the Zen master. And, and you know, Darvin's kind of, he knew what he was getting into when he took the job because he had been through that year. He'd been through, you know, everything that, that went on in 2011. And, um, even even after all that, I remember seeing him a couple of times early on and being like, Darwin, you, you, you all right, man? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, first, the first five games, I was, that was that was unlike anything I'd seen in a long time in the NBA with as bad as it was with Westbrook and, 
you know, the decision of like, are we going to send this guy home? I mean, it's it was literally, it was, it was pretty bad. Plus they had no shooting. They had, they had just really very little to work with. Their defensive players were just, you know, there was like dead AD back there and that's about it. You know, I mean, it was, it was rough. And the fact that they've been able to flip the script here and, and just completely turn over the roster is pretty remarkable. I think Darwin deserves a lot of credit for just keeping the team in it, keeping them together and not completely fracturing because that, that, that two and 10 start the way that they got off to this season with the personality. And, and, and I don't want to just say Westbrook. I think there was a few very difficult personalities in that locker room. The beginning, you know, Pat Beverly was, was a difficult one for people this year in LA. Um, and uh, it was, it was, that was, that was rough. And, and I can't believe they're, they're here now considering how bad it was at the beginning. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to three Eastern for free.